70s when I was just uh, two years old. <laughs> well, that's where Jesus did it for me. I am excited about our lesson today because it's about a dream for souls. I was uh, talking with our deacons earlier about our dream this coming year. Uh, it's not only that we support missionaries, we as a church would go to other countries like we did in Kenya and uh, try to reach for more souls. And we will also start uh, the mission work in Palawan. As you have, we have been praying about this for a long time. And uh, uh, pray, pray natin ito, uh, we received a message from one of the men that I had the privilege of training when I was in Iduido. Siya at saka yung may bahay. They are now serving the Lord in Laguna. And they, he has no idea we are praying for Palawan. And he just uh, sent me a message uh, that uh, he is asking for an advice. Uh, and uh, I told him we are also praying for Palawan. And if he is willing, then, uh, he will probably be our missionary in Palawan. We are not sure about that yet, but uh, uh, I know the couple very much. Estudyante natin dati sa Bible College. So, dalawa na sila dun sa Palawan kung sa kasakali. And uh, it's good to have a part in world missions. Amen? Na meron tayong... Ang ating church ay merong dream for souls. Uh, ito dapat yung laging nasa puso natin as a church. We should always be dreaming for the salvation of souls. Not only as a church, but individually, Every Christian should have that desire in their hearts to see souls turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior. Brother Elwin will come and guide us through the lesson, so please listen and uh, make sure you, you learn something. If we have time later on to, for sharing time, you can also share some insights that you learn from the discussion. Uh, thank you, Pastor John. Uh, good afternoon, George. Every time I step into this pulpit, I cannot help but to shiver. Kinakabahan pa rin ako even uh, many times I've been here in stage, especially this time of uh, teaching and preaching the Word of God. And I hope uh, you already prepared your heart and you have uh, been blessed this morning, this uh, message uh, earlier. And I'm asking everyone to uh, please stand up and uh, open your Bibles on Acts chapter 11. We're going to study Acts chapter 11, verse 1 to 8. Now, we're not going to read the entire uh, passage here. We're just going to read the first two, Acts 11, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 1 and, 1 and 2. And then after that, we're going to read the last verse. Say amen if you are there. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Let's read. And the <laughs> and Peter will come to the Jerusalem. Okay, let's pause for a minute. As we can see here, that uh, that Peter, uh, after he went to Caesarea, he, he came back to uh, to the city of Jerusalem. He was contented by the by the Jews there. So he was being confronted and there is some sort of discussion because he went to the to the Gentile city and even teach to the Gentiles. Now if we're going to read the last verse in verse 18, after the testimony of uh, Peter, this is what the verse the, the verse says. Verse 18, when they heard these things, they heard their peace and glorified God, saying that they had Gentiles and granted repentance unto life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious God, uh, we're praying for you this afternoon that you may guide us our, in our study this afternoon. May you open our hearts and our minds, O oh God, to accept and to learn uh, the word that you, uh, you wanted to uh, teach us this morning. Bless us this time of doctrine class. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all be seated. If you were here uh, last couple of weeks, uh, when uh, Brother Renella teached the 
Acts chapter 10 and Brother Martin last week. This uh, teaching was a continuation of those previous chapter. You might heard this over and over again that what happened exactly in this chapter. So in chapter 9 and 10, God worked with Peter to help him in all the Jewish believers to realize that the Jewish or the Gentiles could also be saved. So this is the main part of uh, our, our uh, lesson for this afternoon. And as Peter returns to Jerusalem, he is confronted by the Jewish believer about going to a Gentile house and sitting at his table to eat with him. The text says that we that they are of the circumcision with him. This we can found in verse 3. The circumcision were the members of a strong legalistic party in Judea. These are the elders of the church. So discontented with Peter, I would like you to uh, underline the word circumcision and again the, con the word contended. The word contended means is to separate one itself to a hostile spirit to oppose, strive, or dispute. This greeting was not necessarily a warm welcome from Caesarea because some Jews are very disturbed when Peter when Peter's interaction with the Gentiles. So this is one is uh, one of the big deals for the Jews that time. Because if you can remember when the Lord Jesus Christ told the apostles on Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 to 6 that where that they are told that do not go to the ways of the Gentiles and into the city of Cesare and ye not. But rather go to the lost ship of the house of Israel. In the instruction of Panginoon so Christo sa kanila. That's what has been uh, instructed by our Lord Jesus Christ. So when they heard these things that Peter went to the Gentiles, he abode with them, he ate with them, and preached the word of God. So this is the argumentation that has uh, been happening in this in this uh, chapter. The text says that he explained this in order what exactly happened. In chapter 10, we can see the story as it happened. Now in this chapter 11, uh, Peter was uh, telling the story what really happened on previous chapter because he's talking now to the to the to the Jewish people. Some of you may ask that the telling of this uh, of this story took place in chapter 10 and recorded again in chapter 11, like I said, na ulit. But when God repeats it, uh, it's an important principle of the hermeneutics of the uh, knowledge that deals with interpretation. That what God said in the Bible, it is important. Whatever God says in the scripture, this is important. But what God repeats, it gives an emphasis to what exactly He's telling. So this event is very important event affected in the future of this church. It, uh, this is a, if we're going to say so, that this is the very turning point of the uh, churches today. Here, this uh, lesson we're going to. Uh, discuss some few points if you're going to look on your notes where you have some three points there that we're going to uh, enumerate to study and study uh, what's going on in this uh, in this chapter first number one in your outline Peter rehearsed the dream Peter rehearses the dream what we can see here in letter A Peter sees the sheet the sheet of unclean creatures. May nakita si, si Apostle Peter. And Peter was praying and fell into a trance. We can see this in verse 5. He mentioned the trance. He fell on a trance. That doesn't mean na nahulog siya sa isang bagay or uh, something na kung ano man ito. Trance meaning is a, is a state of one who has either of owing importance or novelty of an event. Or he, or he was thrown into a state of blended by uh, fear and wonderment because of those things that what he saw so that's the trans mean and he had this vision 
Now, he has this vision in which he sees the following. May nakita si, si Pedro na mga bagay. A certain vessel, imagine this, a certain vessel descend and as it was a great sheet down from the heaven by four corners. We can read this in verse 5. And it came to Peter and he saw it. So Peter saw this uh, this uh, this vessel coming down from heaven, and what he saw is uh, Peter saw the sheet of all kinds of four-footed beasts, wild beasts, creeping creeping things, and the fowls of the air. So when, after when he saw these things, Peter nas just na uh, hindi lang yun nakita yung mga bagay nito, but Peter also heard something. In letter B, Peter heard the Savior's voice. Narinig niya ang salita nating uh, Panginoon. A voice told to Peter, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. And then what happened exactly is Peter argues with the instructions. Bakit? And sabi ni Peter, Peter refused because all of these animals were unclean and common. And they were not therefore lawful for due to it. If you're going to read the in the first few books of the Old Testament, starting from the Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you can see a lot of word saying unclean. So this is one of the parts of the Bible that says which is unclean. Do not touch it, do not eat it, do don't whatever. God says that because these are things are unclean. So that's what uh, Peter have in mind. That this thing what he saw coming down from heaven are the are unclean things but what happened in this point peter was rebuked by god peter was rebuked by god the voice from the heaven said to peter what that this we can found this in verse 9 what god had cleansed that thou not call uh, that call not thou common peter said it was repeated three times before all were drawn up into heaven Let's focus again. It was repeated three times. So, so if it is this uh, chapter was uh, first, uh, you can read this in chapter 10. It was repeated again in verse and chapter 11. We're looking for uh, emphasis. God is uh, emphasizing uh, specific things of an importance. Peter is rehearsing of this dream is very significant to the event that took place on that day. It was important for Peter to tell this to the authority for what he did next. In fact, Peter made the mention that God repeated the same vision three times. So let, let's say uh, if, you're go, if you're in a st uh, school, if your teacher told you or teach you a lesson three times, even the dullest person can understand what the teacher is telling because uh, the teacher is emphasizing this point over and over again unless you're not listening or you're sleeping but in this case peter saw the image these things and he also heard the voice of god amen so this one uh these things just come, uh, happen in another on that same day then peter mentioned again that there are uh, three messengers came after this vision happened so may tatlong taong dumating because uh, in early chapter we noticed that after he saw this vision and God spoke to him that there will be uh, three messengers coming from from sa anong sa lugar yun na galing kay pinapinadala ni Cornelius to, to seek Peter because there was an angel that uh, appeared to Cornelius to look for Peter so this showed again in Jewish belief. So this uh, this showed in other Jewish believers that God sanctioned Peter to go with the Gentiles. What Peter did would not be in a in a state of taboo. The chapter this of the chapter ten and verse fourteen it does not state that whether Peter abode abode with them or to make a siya, It's not only says that he asked him to abide with him in certain days. We only know that the word of God got them back to Jerusalem and abide them with Cornelius' home. 
There is no exact uh, what the Bible says, how exactly this word came to Jerusalem. What we notice here that the, because in that time, we do, they don't have any cell phones, they don't have any internet. It's something just happened in between that the, that the Jews from the uh, Jerusalem heard what happened in Caesarea. That uh, Peter abode with the Gentiles. Number two in your notes, we can see that Peter receives the messengers. And the messengers request for Peter. Now Peter connects the vision of these three messengers to Caesarea. Just like I said earlier, after this uh, vision he made, exactly at the same time there was three messenger came. And the Holy Spirit led Peter to leave his comfort zone because he was comfortable preaching to the Jewish nation. Uh, before, the, uh, before the death of uh, Stephen, the apostles were scattered abroad outside the Jerusalem, but they were just only teaching only to the Jews, not into the Gentiles. So in this case, Peter was all, always preaching the word to the Jews. He, even he is in Joppa. So God led him to do something which is more uncomfortable and very awkward. Because uh, he remembers in Matthew 10 that Jesus himself told him not to go to the ways of the Gentiles. Even going to the city of the Gentiles. So, so that's what uh, exactly uh, happened on that day. Note that Peter did not hesitate when the Spirit prompted him again. This would be an awkward in the flesh and perhaps illogical into intellect. But Peter obeyed. Sumunod siya in spite of all the things. He obeyed immediately and he took six of his brother with him. And the Holy Spirit prepared Cornelius to hear. We learned uh, what happened in uh, chapter 10 that uh, an angel of God appeared to, Cornel to Cornelius. So in that alone, the Holy Spirit prepared Cornelius what uh, Peter is going to say. It's not that God prepared the preacher, but also he prepares the sinners. Cornelius is the whole household and, he there, and they was ready to listen to the word of God. In number three, Peter remembers the Holy, the Holy Spirit's work. Now in this event, the power of the Holy Spirit was remembered. When now Peter recalls that the Spirit fell on Cornelius into his household, that the Spirit came unto Peter in the 123, the upper of Pentecost, he remembered what exactly happened on Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit fell down on the apostles. Naalala niya yung naka, nangyari sa kanila noong the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit just fell on them. And he also, in your notes, it is supposed to be promised of Christ remembered. Just uh, uh, correct the word power to promise. The promise of Christ remembered. He remembered what exactly our Lord Jesus Christ told us. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, he remembered what Jesus said. So uh, as you notice here, Everything just happened so very fast. So before he paid, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Just exactly what happened on Acts 2. And after that, he remembered what Christ told them in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. And being, and, and, and it says here, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Hindi dapat sila aalis sa Jerusalem. They were commanded not to go out, not to depart, but wait for the promise of the Father. He remembered what Jesus told them that to wait for the promise, uh, wait for the promise of the Father. So this is the promise that I believe that uh, Peter is uh, realizing this time. He remembered something that God has promised to them in the in the early verse of the, in the early chapter of this book, which he said that he been heard of me. For John is truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not, and not many days hence. Before they were being baptized, before they received the Holy Spirit. 
This what happened on Acts chapter 12 verse uh, 36. Because this one of the part that uh, uh, na nangyari on that time, when Peter preached to Cornelius, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. But in the early stage, in the early chapter, they were baptized first before they received the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the promise that uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 45 has said. In Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 38 they said when they heard now when they heard this is the preaching of uh, uh, Peter they were break in their heart and he said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do anong gagawin namin and then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized and every one of you in the name of Lord of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it is clear here that before the day of Pentecost, they need to be baptized before they are going to receive the Holy Spirit. But in this case, before uh, Peter receives, uh, uh, before he said or teach to Cornelius, the Holy Spirit already fell upon them without having baptized first. So this is exactly what happened when Peter teach in the house of uh, Cornelius. Let us see the placement of believers remembered. Now God's gift is given to Gentiles. We can read this in verse 17. Now Peter states that if we have, he states that if God gave Gentiles the gift of the Holy Spirit as he did Jews, he could not argue with the Lord. So this is now the turning event. Before the Jews was, uh, before the gospel was need to be preached only to the Jews, but now in this, if we're going to mark this uh, Acts chapter 11, this is not the turning point. This is not the start of our church age, the grace age. That uh, once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal and savior, you do not need for a baptism to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay, so in this case, if you receive Him. Then you are saved. Earlier, if you uh, can uh, recall uh, what uh, our pastor has taught us regarding uh, receiving the uh, receiving the word and how you're going to be saved by by grace through faith, and uh, regarding about the uh, washing of uh, washing as as per the word of God. So, ito yung uh, nangyayari ngayon sa event nato. This is now in the uh, this is now the continuation. What happened before is exactly now happening in this church time. So when the Gentiles received the spirit of salvation, they did nothing but believe on Jesus Christ. This circumstance was different what took place in Acts chapter 2. They have to baptize publicly for the identification of the identification that you are part of the church or part of our identification with Jesus before they could receive the Holy Spirit. The event of this text of pattern of believers from this point forward, this is now our church age. Now this, uh, there's, if we're going to read in Romans chapter 9 to 10, it supports this uh, verse. It says here, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be in the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man not be in the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. What says in this uh, scripture, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not saved. You are not saved. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you can see the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.22, we know the, the fruits of the Spirit, which is uh, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such thing as, as there is no law. We can see this, to our, or we can also teach this to our uh, people who are teaching the Bible. Because some of the folks, they tell that they have been saved. And we know that uh, they have so many versions of uh, how they have uh, been saved. And there, there's a light. Some say they are saved because of the good works. What exactly happened, uh, what, what exactly says in Romans 8, that they are, uh, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not saved. And we can see this by the, 
And we can uh, truly identify if you're sick, you have this fruit of the Spirit. God later revealed in Romans that if you have not the Spirit of God dwelling in you, you are not saved. The Holy Spirit becomes the identifier of God's children. You are identified as one of Him. The Holy Spirit is, does not require ident identifies the believers but also secures them in the salvations forever. Christians are externally secure to the permanent dwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. And lastly, God gives what's given in the glory of God. When Peter finished the testimony, this is now in verse 18, the Romans must be silent. Naging tahimik sila. It's probably because uh, of this turn of event. They're not supposed to teach the Gentiles, but now, when uh, Peter had this testimony that God revealed something to him, he just not saw it, but God spake to him that he need to preach the word to the Gentiles. Now, now uh, they were all that God, uh, these Jews, they were all what have God has done to them. Because uh, previously, the salvation was only in the house of the Israel, but now God reached out to the Gentiles. Peter had nothing to fear, and after all, he had only followed the orders of the Lord. And the Spirit has clearly confirmed that the salvation of the Gentiles, and Peter reviewed the entire experience from the beginning to end. When he finished, the Jews legalists dropped their charges and glorified God for the salvation of the Gentiles. What we can learn in this uh, study, actually this is a very short study, it's been uh, taught two times ago, uh, last week and a couple of weeks ago, this is now the uh, the time that the word of God reached to the Gentiles. After the after these Jews heard of it, they dropped their charges. So what we learn from this uh, what we learn from this uh, study is that we can learn from Peter. We can learn from Peter how he stepped out out of his comfort zone. Sometimes we have been uh, comforted in whatever we do for Christ. Sometimes we're uh, we're teaching the same people over and over again. But sometimes we need to go out further. We need to go more in faith. We need to go more in faith. Because uh, last time when we were having a Bible study, they, they just want only a Bible study. They don't want to go to church because of so many reasons whatsoever. They don't want to go out of their comfort zone. So same thing to us. We need to go further teaching the Word of God. So this is uh, what we uh, that, that, what the Gospel is telling us that uh, we should not be that we should be uh, not weary in well-doing for in due time we will uh, if we faint not but uh, we will uh, we will go into it if we paint if we paint not so uh, i hope uh, this afternoon uh, you learn something about uh, the life of peter and how that that, that course of the church is changed forever and the word of god reaches for our life i hope uh, you're uh, blessed this afternoon and let us pray yeah. Dear uh, Heavenly Gracious God, we thank you for your uh, for the for your word that uh, we study this afternoon, and we're praying that uh, you may continually bless each and every one of us uh, by your word, O oh God, and uh, we're praying that uh, you may bless us with uh, with your wisdom, O oh God, with teaching the word to others, especially the for those one who needs your word. All this we pray in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Okay. Okay, uh, first and first, uh, in the first blank, Peter rehearses the dream. Peter rehearses the dream. Letter A, Peter sins, sin, nakita. Peter sins the shit of unclean creatures. Letter B, heard, or hear. Hear the service voice. And number two, Peter receives. Receives the messenger. Letter A. The messengers requested for Peter. Letter B. Peter goes with the messenger. Number three. Number three is uh, Peter remembers the Holy Spirit. Letter A. The power of the Holy Spirit remembered. Lahat ng blank is remembered. All the blanks remaining there is remembered. Okay, may, may question po? Okay na. Thank you po. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Elwin.
go back to our text. I'm sure meron kayong mga lessons that you would like to impart here. Uh, this is already a recap of uh, our two previous lessons taught by Brother Renel and by Brother Martin. Uh, maraming lessons dito. We have so many things that we can learn from the story. Amen? What are those? Okay, amen kayo. So, ano yung lesson niya? What can you learn from the story? So, basically, yung nangyari sa what, what has transpired in chapter 10, when Philip had the... What was that? Help me. When Philip had... Philip, Peter had the vision. And uh, on the other hand, meron din isang Gentile. What was, who was his name? Cornelius. And what was Peter's vision about? He saw what? A sheet with, with various kinds of meat, not animals. Okay. But uh, he refused to eat because anong, anong reason doon? Kasi sa mga hudyo, merong mga, there are certain kinds of animals that they cannot eat. It was forbidden for them to eat. That was the reason, by the way, why Daniel refused to eat of the king's meat in Babylon. Uh, what are some examples of those uh, forbidden animals? Unclean animals ang tawag doon. Can you name some? Yung mga animals na uh, four-footed beast na ano yung ano? Na yung kanilang hoof, yung kanilang pa, hindi na okay, it's not divided. What are those animals? Uh, ano na? Camel? What else? Horse? What else? Yung mga ganun. Or, pwedeng nahati rin yung paa niya but they do not chew the cut. Like what? Pig. Pero para naman si mga hudyo yan. God wants these people to be, you know, they are peculiar. So everything about them was different. Kailangan may distinction. Uh, so those are some. Bats, for example. Or yung mga isda, fish that doesn't have scales. Uh, ano mga kilala yung mga isda na walang... Yeah, mga catfish or eel or what else. Pero tayo naman mga Pilipino, walang patawa din, no? <laughs> Do you eat uh, catfish? Do you eat eel? Do you eat bats? You know, that's very interesting. You know, Africans, Kenyans are very, very choosy when it comes to food. You tell them about the food we eat in the Philippines, they will say, hmm. <laughs> They can believe it. They're very choosy, you know, they're social. Uh, we, we talk to them about, you know, we eat like phytons. Have you eaten phytons? Yes. Yeah, very good, very delicious. But people who are weird doesn't like it. But people who are normal, they do like uh, lizards. Yeah? Well, we are, the Bible is our authority, eh, amen? Frogs. Do you eat frogs? Rats. They're very good. They're very good. Yeah. We really like that. Are you a Christian? Are you a child of God? Are you obedient to His word? Can you read Genesis chapter 9 verse 3? Who can read? Read the verse. Read it loud, brother Mike. When you go back to Kenya, make sure you do that, okay? Read it loud. Every moving thing. Does a frog move? Do the lizard move? Does a python move? Why did you say no? You're not an Indian. Yes, she is. Okay, go ahead. Every moving thing. Go ahead. So, are those edible? Basing from this verse? See? This is even before the, before the Jews existed, you know? But verse number 4, there is one prohibition here. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall give it. And bawal naman yung ano na yan. Pero kung kumakaya kayo, bahala kayo. Pero ako ayaw, may verse ako eh. 
Kaya nung naman yun, hindi naman pag tayo ko sa harap ng Panginoon dalang araw, free ako. If you want to justify that, sige, justify nyo, baka na kayo. Basta ako, may verse ako dyan. Amen? Sagot ay ba yung masarap mo? Ah, bakit? Kaya nga bumayan si Adan at saka si iba dun sa bunga, masarap yun eh. Not everything that glitters is you know, gold. And, uh, Okay, yung mag-away-away dahil lang sa verse na yun, ha? Sabi ko naman, bahala kayo. We have individual soul liberty. Amen? Amen! Kung gusto nyo mamayin, sige, tuloy nyo. Pero wala kayong hindi nyo pwedeng sabihin sa Panginoong Balang Araw. Lord, wala nyo nagsabi sa akin, eh. Remember, you will be judged by what is in the book. Eh, kung sabat, marami akong mga pastor ang kilala kong makain naman. Eh, they are not your authority. Amen. The word of God is my final authority. Amen. Amen. Kung meron na kalahin dyan sa Bible na Bible at pwede lang naman pala, anong klaseng Bible to? Diba? Very clear yun eh. Ba't kumakaya ka siguro naman? Kato yung Bible na agad doon. You can read it from Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 21. It is the same bracket. Uh, Stranded beast, blood, fornication, and ano ba yung isa doon? Nagkalagay doon eh. Acts chapter, so, ba't tayo napunta doon? Okay. See, uh, bakit nga tayo napunta doon? <laughs> Hindi na nakarebut to, abro mo ba nun ha? Atin-atin na lang doon. So, yan yeah, yung vision. Some food are forbidden for the Jews. Sa mga Jews. Uh, kasi yung mga merong moral law, merong ano, ceremonial law, merong mga dietary law, may mga maraming, maraming law law sa mga nalit. Yung moral law nang dyan. Pero yung mga ceremonial law, how they will worship God, what they should offer, wala na yun. Yung mga law sa yung diet, wala na rin yun. Pero kung i-observe nyo, huwag kayo sa doon gumain ng baboy, okay yun. Kasi nasa Qatar kaya. Pag sa Pilipinas, hindi kaya na. Uh, na huwag may sado yung mga taba-taba kaya. Ha? Baka kayo yung mga uh, high blood. Okay. Say by the blood, tied with high blood. Hindi na mga Christian yun, ha? They will say by the blood and they died of high blood. So, uh, and uh, sa totoo lang yung mga pinagbawal naman talaga ng Panginoon, kung medyo iwas-iwas doon, it's uh, healthy para sa atin. Kasi ang original ng provision ng tao, according to Genesis 1.29, are what? Herbs, fruits. Yun ang talaga ang original. But, Genesis chapter 9, after the flood, one year yung flood eh. Not for the days, ha? Eh. Siyempre, wala nang alaman, wala nang vegetables, wala nang fruits. You know? One year ba naman ang flood? The water reached, uh, what was that? 15 cubits above the highest mountain. That is 22 feet. So, kung ito yung pinamataas na bundok, may kahoy doon, lumagpas pa doon ng tubig. Ha? Huh? I think Everest, yun pa rin yung dati, 29,028 feet above sea level. Uh, so, uh, those things are forbidden to the Jews. Okay? So, Peter would, not, would refuse to eat. Because he said, Lord, that's forbidden. And God showed him the vision again. And per, uh, finally, he was persuaded and he went and uh, Cornelius also sent for him. So, God was working in the life of two parties, Peter and also in the life of Cornelius. Somebody who has the message and somebody who needed the message. And so when when Peter went, he said, why did you call for me? And you know the answer of uh, Cornelius. We are all here, uh, para marinig, to hear what God has to say, the, the, what, the, the message of God. Now, this reads, ito yung story dito. What happened here was heard by the church in 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 Judea. Jerusalem is in Judea. Yung Southern Kingdom. Okay. They heard about what happened in Caesarea with the, uh, Peter. Uh, dito ko gusto na emphasize kung dito. I want to dwell on this just a little bit. Uh, they heard something. You know, what we what we say, what we hear, oftentimes affects our relationship. Am I right? 
whether it's our neighbors or in our office where we work or relationship our server destroyed because of what other people say and because of what we hear and when brother Erwin was talking uh, the church in Judea heard something that means somebody told them are you following? now the one who told them something did not tell the entire story and therefore the church in Judea did not hear the, the entire story and this is the sad thing about this they already had an ill feeling towards Peter because of something they have never heard they were just waiting for Peter to come but that ill feeling is already there they were contended that means talagang kinumpronta nila maganda sana approach yung you know what may naririnig akong ganito pero ayaw kong maniwala eh kasi hindi naman yun ang pagkakakilala ko sa iyo eh kaya gusto kong itanong lang sa iyo ganun ba dapat uh, yung approach now our lesson here the obvious lesson here is be careful with what you say do not tell just half truth if you are going to tell half truth don't don't say it because some people will believe you uh, so it's a lesson here of what we say when we say things we should know the entire story writers of the newspapers or announcers of the radio are very good in this they give you something that's true but it's half the truth and they will bombard you with the half truth that they know they will not present everything you know they just take one side of the story is this right am i right yes and so but it's not the whole truth that is devastating it is always a devastating thing especially to relationship when that happens what we say be careful with what you say make sure that you share the entire story husband and wife will have a wife will have a fight what will the husband do he will tell his side of the story he never tell the wife's side of the story the wife's side will tell her story but will never tell the husband's side she will tell or he will tell what wrong the other party did but they will never say the wrong thing that they have done and so be careful when people are telling you something do not be quick into jumping do not be quick in jumping into a conclusion okay i hope we will take it uh, we will know. when when people tell you something the first reaction is ah, i don't believe that but i'll try i'll, I'll get the other side so now i'll talk to brother elvin brother elvin uh that's the bible way the bible says if that's something you don't like about the person go to him brother elvin can, can i have your time thank you for being a friend and praying for you and kutiyan para at least mo prepare but may narinig lang ako i don't believe this but uh you know i just hear it so i just want to know your side so alam mo yung side niya and then i can make my conclusions if you will only listen half of the story parang totoo talaga and we are all victims of this we all have believed things because we just heard one side of the story we will be accountable to the Lord for those things so when you say things make sure you give the whole thing if if not don't have, don't even say it or when you are hearing things do not jump into do not be quick into something uh, into conclusions okay now another lesson that we can learn here is give people a chance to explain themselves they were you know, they had those still feeling towards Peter why will Peter do that? Di niya ba alam niya sa ng Panginoon? Why will he do that? Disciple pa naman siya so all those things are going through the mind but you know they waited for Peter to come and uh, the ill feeling is already there but when Peter came they asked him and they gave Peter a chance to explain and the good thing is they they listen to his explanation some people will also ask you for you know what's your side of the story but regardless of what you will say they will already you know made a conclusion and nothing you say will ever change it that is also devastating so be careful with what you say be careful with what we listen to okay do not just say things to make ourselves look good or 
No. Again, we are all guilty of this, not just you. Probably, lalo na ako because, you know, as a pastor, many people will come to you and say this, say this, say this, and so, it's, it's, uh, I've seen a lot of churches. You know, this tongue, this is the worst member of the church. The Bible already said, the tongue can maintain. Can, no, can maintain. It is boneless, but you know, it cuts like a knife. It can kill. It's a very small thing. It's a little fire, the Bible says. So be careful with what you say. Be careful with, with what you hear. Hear both sides of the story. Give people a chance to explain themselves. When they explain themselves, give them the benefit of the doubt. And if they are lying, time will tell. Amen? I don't know. ko si Brother Elwin. Ngayon, i-justify niya na. Hindi din. Okay, I'll take, I'll take your word for it. But you cannot always keep a secret. Man. Okay? You can never. Uh, the Bible already said that. And so time will tell. So ngayon, you don't admit it. Again, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But time will tell. Someday it will come out. So, another thing is be honest when sharing your story. When sharing your story or when you are preaching or when you are teaching, do not exaggerate. It's so easy to add something to your story to make it sound very nice. But if you will hear how Peter rehearsed the story, it was just like, no, kung ano yung nangyari, yun ang nerehearsed ni Peter. So be honest when sharing your testimony or sharing your story. Especially tayo na nag-preprince. Okay. Sometimes sinasabi natin ganito, but we took that from somewhere, and we make it our own. It's better to say, I have read this somewhere, ganito, ganito. Don't try to pretend like it's yours when you just, you know, got it from somewhere, and people are listening to you, and they also sing kung saan mo kinuha yun. I know what you're saying. Anak ko yan, nabasa kayong message na yan, eh. Okay, pati yung story mo. Yung mga kwento ngayon, mga pastor dyan, nagbabasa lang ng mga kumukuha ng anak sa Pilipinas daw to eh. Eh, talagang nagkakopya eh. I was in Las Vegas. Ganun yung sinasabi niya. I was in Las Vegas. You know, I have never been out of the Philippines. <laughs> okay, be honest in sharing your story. And uh, be willing to respond to God's bidding. Isa rin yun na. Peter did not want to do something. But because it was the Lord constraining him to go, so he went. So he was willing to, you know, uh, you mean a willingness to obey the word. Um, I'm sorry, brother, I mean, I don't know because I was just, you know, I was just writing while you were talking. I never planned this and uh, just sharing some thoughts that we have gleaned from the word. That we appreciate, brother Elwin, for uh, guiding us through the lesson today. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's apply the things we learned today from the word of God. There are 82 lessons, and this is lesson number... Conrad, the Conrad, 33 ato or 32. Uh, meron pang mga 50 na natitira sa Acts. So, 33, 82 ito. So, marami pa tayong pag-aaral dito. Okay, let's uh, go to our prayer and then closing him. Brother Ray Bourne, Carissa, is that?